I just really wanted them to just take these breasts off and just throw them away. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Nessa Destra. <laughs> Today I've decided to film what's been long, like way, 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 way long overdue. The second half of my breast reduction video. I don't even remember when I last filmed it. It's been a long time, but I've been putting it off because I wanted to be very accurate, tell you guys what my true experience was. I didn't want to leave anything out. And mostly because I feel like when I filmed it, I left out a lot of information. So my part two wasn't really like of substance. Like I didn't have all the information, all the experience that I went through and I feel like it was rushed. And plus I looked like a hot mess. My makeup was stupid. And honestly, I just, not that my makeup looks any better today, but I felt like I needed to refilm it. And so this is what I'm doing today. So I'm just gonna get right into the video. I jotted a few notes down just so I don't leave anything out, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that at the end of this video or by the time I post it on YouTube, I'm going to wish that I included a few other informations that I probably will miss out. So if I do, I'm just going to put it in the description box and hopefully that will be helpful enough to you guys. So let's just get right into the video. So I left off, I think I left off where I finally got a, I think that's what you're doing, just double check. Yes. So I left off where I finally got approved. So basically that insurance company covers um, certain individuals who can't afford a certain procedure, especially if it's causing them health issues. And just a disclaimer, whether or not I was going to get approved, I knew that I was going to do it eventually. Like I knew, I, I, I was just, I was just, my mind was just set on it. So yeah, I got approved two weeks after um, my consultation, which she told me was, it would take six to eight months, which I, I, I'm pretty sure she meant to say six to eight weeks, but she told me six to eight months. And so I was expecting to wait that long and I was pretty much, not depressed, but really sad about that because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get this done. This is going to take so long and my back is going to be killing me for another year. And I was just over it. Um, although I still wanted to get it. I was just pretty much over the process because it was taking so long for me to do it. So I'm pretty sure you can imagine how excited I was when I found out two weeks later after my uh, first consultation that I was approved by OHIP. And so I didn't have to pay a dime, girl. It was free 99. Fast forward to... Uh, the day they called me and told me um, that there were three dates available for me to get my breast rejection done. So I was going to Cuba around the end of August 2016 and they had a date available before Cuba, um, after Cuba and um, at the end of November. So I was definitely not going to do it before Cuba because I'm not trying to heal while I'm in Cuba and I enjoy myself and be under recovery. Like, that's just stupid. And I didn't want to wait too long in November. I just wanted to feel free as soon as possible. I just really wanted them to just take these breasts off and just throw them away. So, the sooner the better. I think I went to another consultation before the surgery and they basically told me what I had to do, what I had to bring, what I had to wear. Um, and I had done my research already, so I had pretty much gotten everything that I needed before I even went into surgery. So they told me to get a bra and I, if I'm going to be honest, I pretty much wasted money on another bra because I didn't need to buy another bra. I had so many sports bras that pretty, pretty much look like surgical bras. So I didn't need to get that. I just wanted to make sure that I was as comfortable as possible the day of my surgery. So I had kept my full locks that I came out from Cuba with. It was low maintenance, it was full locks and I just had to, all I had to do was literally put in a ponytail and then just lay there. They told me not to eat anything the night before my surgery at 6 p.m. So I didn't eat anything, but let me tell you, before 6 p.m. I was swallowing food. Like I, I ate anything that I could, because when I'm hungry, I'm not the nicest person. I get pretty hangry sometimes and so I made sure I ate basically everything in my house. Come to the day of, I was to get there at, I think it was, I think I was supposed to get there at 8 a.m. or something like that. And then my surgery, I would get in and start my surgery at 11 and then maybe come out three or four hours later. And so I put my gown on and stuff like that. They inserted this tube in me, which I thought was pretty cool because I can taste whatever they were putting in my arm. I feel like every 10 minutes they would ask me, what's your name? Uh, what's your address? When's your birthday? I'm like, what? Is, what is going on? Like, I'm I'm aware, and I get it. It's for like probably medical reasons that they're asking me all these questions, but it was kind of annoying because they asked me that question many times, and I'm like, my birthday is January 13, 1995. I had to keep repeating myself over and over again 
probably asking that question like seven to eight times, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. They roll me into the surgical room. Well, outside the surgical room, and I waited there for like about 45 minutes. And they were just, I guess, prepping the room and stuff like that. So fast forward, I go into the room. Um, they made me take off my sh my gown. Um, and so I only had my underwear on. And then she weighed my boobs, she looked at my size and asked me, can you tell me again what size you'd like for us to go down to? And I told her, honestly, you can leave me with just nipples. I'll be fine. Because I was so, guys, when I tell you, I was so tired of back aches, of being so insecure and not being able to fit in any of my clothes, not being able to find bras. And so I was just so over it. I didn't care if they just took them right off. And so I told her just the lowest size possible. She said, okay, Vanessa, we can't do that for you. We can't just leave you with nipples. So she told me she'd take me down to the most safest size. After she like looked at my breast and started drawing on it and stuff like that, she made me do 360 and then I weighed myself and I was like 133. By the way, I'm 5'7 and I'm pretty skinny and I weighed 133 with my breast. So yeah, I was 133 and then she drew on my breast on the size that she would go down to where she would um, do the incisions and stuff like that. And then casually just told me, like literally casually just told me, by the way, you have a minor case of scoliosis. I could only imagine that that's what happened to me because I, I was not surprised when she told me that I had scoliosis. I mean, it makes sense. I couldn't support my breasts. Like, my back was always hunched. I pretty much looked like Kazimoto. And sometimes I'd purposely do it so that my boobs would look smaller. And it kind of like, it just ruined my back pretty, pretty much. So she said that my back looked like, so, okay, this is your colonne vertebrale. What is that called in English? Your spine. So my, my spine is supposed to be like this, but instead it's like this. So I had scoliosis. I'm not sure if I still do right now. I think I still do. I don't think it just goes away. But yeah, she told me last, like the a minute before my surgery that I had scoliosis. Also, by the way, I forgot to tell you guys that the incision that I did was a lollipop incision. So you have the anchor incision, which is pretty much like this, like an anchor. Um, so it's like from the boob down and then underneath the breast. And then you have the, what's the incision? The donut incision, which is just around the nipple. And then I had the lollipop incision, which she told me would give me a teardrop boob. So it's like, you know Kim Possible? Like how her boob looked like compared to Bonnie's, like the mean girl. So her boob was like, like this. And I think that was pretty cute. So I was like, yes, that's perfect. I'll do the lollipop incision. So I laid down on the bed and then she stretched my arms out, strapped me, disconnected the tube that was already hooked to my arm and connected to a different tube. The thing that was gonna make me fall asleep. I don't know guys, I don't know medical terms or medical instruments and stuff like that. I'm just gonna tell you what I know. And so they told me, oh Vanessa, by the way, we're going to do a liposuction first. So she told me she'd do liposuction first to keep my shape and then do the incision. She said I had a lovely shape. And I did, I honestly did really, really love my boob shape. Like my boobs were pretty much perfect. However, it was just too big and it was just causing so much pain I couldn't fit into anything. When I was laying down, I kept asking so many questions. I was just, I was literally a blabber mouth. And the reason why I was talking so much is because I was so excited. When I'm excited, I talk a lot. Every in the room was just laughing at me. There's probably like seven people in the room and they were all looking at me and laughing at everything that I said. I wasn't even joking or anything like that. Fast forward to the when they started to pass the uh, liquid into my system to drug me and to knock me out. The last thing I said before they knocked me out was, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I've always wanted to know how this felt to be knocked out. And I started laughing a lot and I'm like, can you just count down when I'm gonna go out? They started counting and I'm like, wait, wait, is it coming right now? I feel it, is it, is it? And I just hear a lot of people laughing in the background and then it's like blurry and I just boop, knocked out. And then I woke up 15 minutes later. Well, it felt like 15 minutes later. When they say they knock you out, it's literally, wow. So after the surgery, I started to open my eyes and I started seeing people pass by me. So I figured I was rolling. And then I see my boyfriend, Isaac, and I see my sister and then my friend, Katsi, and then my mom, and just, they're just like looking at me. The only thing I remember is me saying, oh my gosh, I was in there for 15 minutes. I slept for 15 minutes. And like, no, my friend. You were there for three to four hours, and they told me that Vanessa oh, needs to get up. 
because if I didn't, if I couldn't like get up and open my eyes long enough, that means I would stay overnight. And so I was like, oh, hell no, I'm not staying in this hospital. So I was like, okay, I'm getting up, I'm getting up. I just remember feeling so tired. Like I, I just felt so drowsy, so exhausted, as if I just ran a marathon. I couldn't keep myself up. I couldn't talk properly. I couldn't walk properly. Like I was just. I also forgot to mention, um, for my breast reduction, I didn't have to carry any bags to drain the blood or pus. They sent me home with just like band-aids. But I was so relieved when I found that I didn't have to do that because I didn't want to carry bags. I just felt like it would probably feel a lot worse just having bags underneath your boobs and walking around with that. So fast forward, going into the car, my boyfriend decided to drive me and literally he was driving at 20. Max 30. Because I literally could not take any bumps like because it was so uncomfortable i felt like my boobs were hanging on strings but yeah he drove at 20 and 30 because my boobs were i wouldn't say they were painful they just felt so uncomfortable and it felt like something was laying on my boobs like it felt like like there was so much pressure so after i got home laying on my bed two pillows underneath me one pillow underneath my knees and two pillows on my right two pillows on my left like i was extra guys i did not want to roll anywhere because I was just scared that my boobs would just open up. Literally, I would stay in my bed all day. The only time I would get up is if I needed to go pee. I only pee maybe like once a day because I did not want to get up. So I was in bed rest for two weeks. Um, they told me to just try to do as minimum effort as possible. Um, I didn't take a proper, like a full body shower. Maybe like in a week and a half, I didn't take a proper shower. Um, I would do like a bird bath for those of you guys. Who don't know what a birth bath is, is you just clean yourself with a towel and then just you know clean all the intimate parts. So I was still fresh, I just never took a, like a full blown shower. Ooh, my face is getting oily. So yeah, I didn't want to take a full blown shower because I was scared that my boobs would just open up in the shower and everything would just like gush out. Like I was so extra because I just wanted this to be perfect. I didn't want to have to go in and like restitch certain parts, which I ended up doing. One of my stitches opened at the bottom of my, of my breast. During the healing process of my breast reduction, she prescribed me with Tylenol 3, so that was pretty much okay. But yeah, um, the only bad part about Tylenol 3 for me was the constipation part. I had to take like different pills to like get my bowel movement <laughs> to start actually moving. Although it helped with the pain, I was constipated for seven days and so Literally everything I ate just sat in my stomach and I couldn't poo. I tried, I would sit in the bathroom, I would sit there for like 30 minutes and nothing would come out. So, for those of you guys who don't know what a suppository is, Google that. It's, yeah. So after doing the suppository, I ended up finally pooing after like seven to eight days, which was a relief because I was starting to get scared. Um, I had never not pooed for seven days. During the healing process, I had also lost my appetite. Um, I didn't want to eat anything. And if I did, it'd probably be nutriment because that's all I pretty much ate. I ate nutriments and then soft things like, like, like ramen noodles and stuff like that. I had lost even more weight after my surgery than what I started with before my surgery. I tried to stay inside as much as possible. I didn't try to lift anything, but when I went back, so I went back to school two weeks after and a lot of people were hugging me. They were hugging me really hard. And so I think that's what opened up my stitches. I was doing too many movements. I was carrying a book bag. I was just doing the most because I felt like I was ready. I really wasn't. So when my stitch opened, she gave me some ointment to put on it to close the, um, the opening. So I would say be on bed rest for like four weeks. I think that that should be like the perfect amount. And then within a few months, I went uh, to a few consultations for them to check my breast out and tell me what else I had to do. So that was pretty much my procedure, what I had gone through. I'm pretty sure I've left out a few details because again, everybody's breast reduction surgery is different. I can't tell you exactly what to do. Um, I can only tell you my story because that's what I've gone through. Everybody's story is different because everybody's breast is different and uh, you know, that's just that. The only time I was actually like in pain pain was when I first got my period and she had mentioned that to me during my consultations prior to my breast reduction surgery. She told me that on my first period that I would feel like a burning sensation, which I was terrified about because, because I know that certain people have experienced the burning sensation when they have their first period. and. I just didn't want to go through anything. The reason why I felt like 
it was more painful for me because my breast does swell up before my period and it swells up like really big and so I feel like my boobs were stretching the stitches literally I was always like this walking anywhere whenever I went out I was always like this I went to school crossing my arms I was always like that in the house always holding my boobs up all the time going into the shower especially around the time where it, I felt the burning sensation because my period was coming my sister had to hold my boobs for me to put my clothes on and that point that's when it hurt the most imagine like feeling like your boobs are hanging on strings and having a burning sensation at the same time because your boobs are swelling and stretching the stitches like that's but anyways, that was the only time it was actually painful. My breast reduction was done on September 7th of 2016. And it's going to be, oh, it's been, actually, I think it's two years now. It's two years, which passed by really quickly. So like I said, every single breast reduction story is different according to each person because Everybody has different breasts. Everybody will have a different surgeon who will recommend you know, a different procedure. So it's always gonna be different for everybody else. Mainly because it was giving me back pain, neck pain, and like I said previously, that it gave me scoliosis. And so that was one main reason why I got it. And the other reasons was pretty major because it literally killed me mentally and emotionally. I couldn't fit into any of my clothes. I was disproportionate. I couldn't just buy anything off the rack. Every time I would go to a store, they would tell me, oh, we don't carry your size because my waist was too small, my boobs are too large. It was a lot. And my size didn't exist in Victoria's Secret, um, in La Senza, in any, not even Walmart. I was still overflowing from a 34 triple D. My waist size is pretty small and a 34 triple D may not seem big to other people, but it was pretty big on me. Like. I have like, I was basically a chopstick, you know, with large breasts. And that's one of the reasons why I got it. Um, and I've been thinking about it for a very, very long time. No, I wasn't. I wasn't nervous at all. I was more, the only time I was a little bit nervous is because I was scared of the pain, which is pretty normal. But after that, I was pretty much more excited than I was nervous. I had waited for this and anticipated this for such a long time. I just wanted to feel free and liberated. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say it, the pain level was like maybe like a 4 out of 10. And then during my period, it was like a 5, 5 almost 6. It's just that my boobs were just so uncomfortable. And you, you can confuse it with pain, but it's not really pain. It's just so uncomfortable that it feels like pain. Again, that's just how I felt about the pain. Everybody else is different. I have a pretty high tolerance for pain, I think. Getting braces is so much more painful than my breast reduction procedure, let me tell you that. Is the scarring bad? Honestly, I'm really, really thinking about getting reconstructive surgery so I can fix my scars because I really don't like them. My lollipop scar is, it should be like very, very minor, but it's like, it's not cute. And I basically have an extra scar that pretty much looks like another nipple. And so basically I have three nipples. I just. Uh, even my mom agrees that I should get it because although my shape is nice still, I just feel like the the scarring was not good. I really believe that it looks like that because my surgeon didn't prescribe any healing um, creams or anything like that. And also because there was movements, a lot of movements going on. It's like, it just stretched. Like imagine like a zigzag on your scar. Instead of having a one line, it looks like a zigzag. And then I have like an extra nipple on my nipple which is basically a keloid. So yeah, I'm gonna get like a few steroid shots to remove the keloid and then do reconstructive surgery so that they can fix my scars because I'm not satisfied with them, not gonna lie. Before I was, because I was like, oh, maybe it's gonna go away, but it's been two years and it's still there. Although it's lightened a little bit, it's, it's just, it just really bothers me and I think it's very ugly. Um, but then again, it may be different for everybody else. Just because my scars are like that doesn't mean that your scars will be like that. And I don't wanna scare you guys, um, but that's just my reality and that's what happened to me. I was immobile for three, I wouldn't say immobile. If I'm gonna be honest, I was immobile for two weeks. Like a good two weeks. It could have been less, but I was just like, I just didn't wanna move. And then I started getting back to my regular, like, regular, regular activities at, like at four weeks. So I had lollipop incision done. So basically they cut around your nipple and along your breast, which left me with a compossible boob, which means that it looks like a teardrop. 
so I'm really happy about that. But like I said, I love the shape, I just don't like the scarring, so I'm gonna get that fixed. And as far as uh, like medication and stuff like that, she only prescribed me Tylenol 3 for the pain, um, but no creams, no ointments or anything for my breast, um, which is probably the reason why my, my scars look the way they do. I feel like I look like what I was supposed to look like before my breast. Like nobody would ever think that I had a breast reduction unless I told them because I'm so proportionate now. Having big breasts made me, you know, change my whole wardrobe. I started wearing only loose fitted clothes. In high school, everybody knew me for having big breasts. That was just, people spoke to my breast before they spoke to me, which is annoying. And it was just, I just, I'm just so happy that I got it done finally. So a few big main advices that I would give to those of you who are thinking of getting breast reduction is so I would recommend waiting until your boobs have fully developed, have fully grown before actually doing it. A lot of people try to discourage me from doing it. And so if you're not sure, if you're second guessing yourself, don't do it. Only do it if you know for sure that there's nothing more that you want because of how much pain you're going through, how insecure you feel, and how much it's affecting you emotionally and mentally. If you know for sure that this is what you want, don't let anybody stop you. Because at the end of the day, they don't know what you're going through with your body. It's your body, you're the one feeling the pain, you're the one that has to deal with it. Like I said, don't listen to these people. They don't they have they don't know half the story of what you're going through. You know your body, listen to your body. Don't let anybody discourage you of making a decision that you know will will make you feel so much better about yourself. I'm not saying to go get plastic and whatever, but I'm saying specifically for breast reduction, it's a health issue and it can really, really mess with you mentally emotionally but most importantly physically that was one thing I, I really didn't appreciate for people a lot of people try to put me down and try to make me you know second guess my decision but then again I've been thinking about it since grade 11 so nothing can shake me I knew I was gonna get it and I finally got it and I'm really happy I would never take it back if I could do it all over again I definitely would and I'm not just saying it just to say it I definitely would right now I don't wear any real bras I bought one bra in the last few months and then I have a bralette, and most of the times I wear sports bras. I don't really wear bra bras because I'm so scared of them. <laughs> I've been traumatized. I hate bras. I hate the way it makes me feel. I hate the marks that it left me, and so I just stay away from them. So now I'm going to show you guys pictures of before and after, and yeah. So that was my story. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching. Again, my process won't be the same as yours. I do appreciate you guys uh, sitting down listening to my story. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. Please comment and let me know if you're thinking about getting breast reduction or what you think about this video and what else you'd like to hear from me or see from me next. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'd love for you guys to be a part of my little family. Subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video.